Hey, what's up everybody? It's the Hyphenate here, and today we're going to be talking about the SSL2 Plus USB audio interface from Solid State Logic. In this video, I'm going to do an overview and a breakdown of the physical interface itself. I'm going to go over every button, knob, and connection port and explain exactly what each does. So let's start off with the back of the unit. This is where all the connection ports are, and we're going to go left to right. On the top left, we have a USB Type-C port, and now this USB port is USB 2.0. Underneath that, we have a Kenningston security slot that you can use to lock and secure your SSL2+. And to the right of that, we have 5-pin DIN sockets for MIDI in and MIDI out. Now, you can use this to connect MIDI equipment such as keyboards and drum modules. To the right of that, we have two quarter-inch stereo output jacks for headphones A and headphones B. We'll talk more about how to use those in a bit. To the right of that, we have two sets of unbalanced outputs via RCA jacks. And to the right of that, we have two quarter inch TRS balanced line output jacks. So let me explain these six different output jacks. The quarter inch jacks have one left and one right to connect to your monitors. Now the RCA jacks that are labeled 1L and 2R are made to output the exact same signal as those two quarter inch jacks. Now again, the quarter inch output jacks are balanced, but the RCAs 1L and 2R, same as three and four, are unbalanced. For the best quality, you're going to want to use the quarter inch jacks to your monitors instead of the 1L and 2R RCA jacks. The RCA jacks 3 and 4 carry the signals from the USB stream output 3 and 4. So if you're using this USB audio interface with a DAW, a DAW, a digital audio workstation, then you can create a separate mix using outputs 3 and 4 so that now you can output via other speakers using the RCA jacks three and four. So you can use outputs one and two for your main mix, and then you can use outputs three and four for a different mix. Now on the top of the interface, there is a knob that allows you to adjust the volume of outputs one and two. I'll explain more about that in a bit, but it's very important to know that the RCA jacks three and four do not have a volume knob that can adjust the output. So if you do connect anything out from three and four, so it's gonna be at full output power. So it might be a little loud. Another thing you can do with jacks three and four is use those to connect to a DJ mixer. Now on the far right are two inputs that are combo XLR and quarter inch jacks. Here you can connect your input sources such as microphones, instruments, keyboards, etc. Now if you're using a microphone, make sure that you connect via XLR. Unless you're using a preamp or some type of outboard gear such as a compressor that outputs your signal via line level and has a quarter inch jack output. If you guys are interested in knowing how to connect outboard gear, I do have a video on this channel on exactly how to do that with this interface. The link to that video is in the description. If you're connecting an instrument directly to the interface, then make sure that you are using a quarter inch jack, either TS or TRS. So now let's go to the top of the unit. On the left, you can see that you can control both input one and two. On the top left of each channel, you can see that you can activate 48 volt phantom power and only use that if your microphone actually uses phantom power, such as a condenser mic. If you're using dynamic microphones, then don't press the 48 volt button. To the right of that is a line level button. If you have a quarter inch TRS jack plugged in, then make sure to enable the line button. To the right of that is high Z. This button changes the impedance of the line input to be more suitable for guitars or basses. Now you can only use high Z when line is activated. Pressing high Z on its own has no effect and does nothing. Now underneath those buttons are LED light meters. You have five LED lights per channel and these show you the level at which your signal is being recorded into your computer. Ideally, you want to be at the negative 20, maybe sometimes at the negative 10, but you definitely don't ever want to hit that zero because that will be clipping and that's actually going to distort your sound. Underneath that, you have a gain knob. This control adjusts the preamp gain applied to your input. Now at the far bottom is the legacy 4K button. This is an analog enhancement effect. It has a combination of a high frequency EQ boost together with some finely tuned harmonic distortion that helps enhance the sound. For the most part, this works pretty well on vocals and acoustic guitars. Now this effect happens internally and is analog and is inspired by the kind of character from the legendary SSL 4000 series console. Now to the right of that, we have a pretty large monitor level knob. Now this adjusts the monitor level, the volume, of outputs 1L, 2R. 
Now this includes the quarter inch jacks from the back as well as the one and two RCA jacks. Above that is a small LED light and it lights up green when it's connected and receiving power via USB. Now on the top right, we have a knob for the monitor mix. Turning that all the way to the right, you're gonna hear only the audio output from your computer's USB stream. Now if you turn it all the way to the left, you're gonna hear only the inputs coming in to the back of the SSL2 Plus, such as a microphone or instrument, etc. Now as you move it in between the input and USB, you'll get a variable blend of the two options. Now when you're recording, you wanna have that knob turned more towards the input so you get less latency. When you're done recording, then turn it all the way to the right as you work on the computer. Right next to that knob is a stereo button. Press that button if your channel inputs one and two are recording the same source and you have two microphones working together to record a stereo image where channel one is gonna be on the left and channel two is gonna be on the right of a stereo recording. If you're recording vocals or anything with just one microphone, make sure that the stereo button is deactivated and not pressed in. Now underneath that, you have two volume knobs for phones A and B. A and B share the exact same audio source, outputs one and two. So you can have a producer listening to headphones A and then you can have a singer or a performing artist that's recording using phones B. Now, as I mentioned earlier, your three and four RCA output jacks on the back can be used for another mix. If you do have another mix using outputs three and four and you wanna monitor them through phones B, then go ahead and press the three and four button. And now phones B is gonna listen to outputs three and four and phones A will listen to outputs one and two. If you don't have a separate mix on your computer using outputs three and four, then make sure that that button is deactivated and not pressed in. So there you guys have it. That's the SSL2 Plus USB audio interface from Solid State Logic. This thing is awesome and I highly recommend it. If you guys are interested in getting it, I do have a link in the description where you can purchase it from either B&H Photo or Amazon. It doesn't change the price that you get it at, but it does help this channel. Please make sure to drop a like on this video, drop a comment below if you have any questions, and please make sure to subscribe. I have a lot more videos coming soon. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.